Hi, I'm Kelly O'Byrne and welcome to LCG's preview for the week ahead. Our head of research, Jasper Lawler, is back with us this week to discuss the Fed rate decision and US inflation, the Bank of England meeting, inflation, employment data and political instability in the UK, and the ECB monetary policy decision. But before we get to all of that, let's have a rundown of the key earnings and economic data for the coming week. So starting with corporate results, a slow start on Monday, but then we have reports from Sweden's SAS, Ashtid Group and Carpet Right on Tuesday. TUI, Dixon's Carphone and Purple Bricks on Wednesday. And Sports Direct, Costco, Oracle and Adobe all reporting on Thursday. Moving on to the economic calendar, on Tuesday we have UK inflation and German ZEW surveys. On Wednesday it's German inflation, UK unemployment, US inflation and the Fed rate decision. On Thursday, China retail sales and industrial production, the Swiss national bank rate decision, UK retail sales, the BOE meeting as well as the ECB meeting and US retail sales. And finally, US industrial production on Friday. So Jasper, it's the last, it's the last of the central banks. Tell us more. Yes, yep. Um, so pretty much the last week of big central bank action before Christmas. Um, pretty much they cram it all into this week and then we kind of wind down a bit going into the holidays. Yeah. So the Fed is always the biggest one really, I think. And so I'll talk about that first. Um, we think they do raise rates. That's the consensus call. So it's pretty much baked in that they do hike by 25 basis points. So it's more about what they talk about going forward, obviously. We think their guidance will be a little bit on the hawkish side. And even if it is quite neutral, I think that the market is setting itself up for a bit of a little period of dollar strength here. And so uh, the market's probably going to read it as hawkish either way. Um, so w the reaction in the stock market is um, a little bit more nuanced. We've obviously had a little bit of a pullback uh, last week. Then we've recovered a bit into the end of the week. But I think probably the year end is going to be a bit more... Um, uh, signs of caution and the Fed is, you know, if they are hiking rates a few more times next year, that's just an extra reason for, for, for investors to feel a bit of caution, feeling that maybe the, the, the cumulative effect of central banks' uh, stimulus is, um, is reducing next year and what does that mean for markets. That thought process is going to be going on. So I think maybe this ends up being maybe net negative uh, stocks a little bit and, um, and uh, positive for the dollar. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think anyone expects a UK rate hike. So what should we look out for? Yeah, precisely. So obviously they've just hiked for the first time in a decade, uh, but they don't seem to, the Bank of England don't seem to be in any rush to, to do more. So um, there's some of the new policymakers that have joined the board recently. Their, um, the general consensus there seems to be that about two more rate hikes are needed uh, for inflation to go back to target. So I think that's probably something we're going to see in the minutes here is not necessarily a specific number of rate hikes mentioned, but just the fact that inflation's probably topped out. And so for that reason, uh, not that many more rate hikes are needed. And they obviously have just got Brexit in the back of their mind. Um, probably they're going to suggest that further tightening might actually be a risk to economic growth, which seems to be slowing a bit. So overall kind of dovish tone and uh, fits in with a bit of a pullback in the pound, I think. Yeah. And how does all the Brexit chaos of, um, of that week, of the previous week, um, play into it? Um, well, I still think there's like an underlying expectation that we do move on to the trade talks and then we work it out with uh, the Irish border. Um, but the risk, to, I think the biggest risk to the pound is probably that uh, Theresa May just doesn't even make it into the end of the year. We've talked about that a little bit before. Uh, if there is a Tory leadership battle, obviously it does throw everything a little bit open. Um, I don't think there's a new snap election, but obviously it's uncertainty. Probably net-net, the new leader would be a bit more inclined towards a softer Brexit, you could argue. So maybe that would actually be positive for the pound, but interim it would be, it'd be bad. So um, it's more about, I would say at the moment, can Theresa May weather this little storm with the DUP and uh, with the, the kind of more hardline Brexiteers in her own party. If she can, then I think we've got room for recovery in the pound. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So moving on then, the ECB already announced uh, tapering. What's next? Yeah, it's a bit of a take a breather meeting from the ECB, I would say. Um, 
they're probably just going to reiterate the very dovish guidance that they gave when they first announced the taper in the last meeting. Um, probably not going to be any discussion of the end of quantitative easing. Um, and so if you remember at the last meeting, we had that um, basic a bit of a topping pattern in the euro, a head and shoulders top pattern where the neckline broke. But subsequently, we've pretty much gone up and uh, re retraced a lot of those losses. The patterns basically failed. So what I imagine is that maybe if they do come out, uh, Mario Draghi comes out pretty dovish again, then we see a bit of another run low in the, in the euro. But I still tend to think, even if it drops a fair bit, that probably we, we hold on to 115 in, in euro dollar. Okay, thanks. And last but not least, um, commodities. Uh, what's moving commodities at the moment? Well, it's been a, a bit, been a bit of a soft week last week for commodities. So we saw gold and and crude oil turn lower. Um, gold, we we I did a snapshot video last week talking about a tra technical trend line breaking. Uh, but I think there's a few things. Um, one more anecdotally, I suppose, is that actually Bit Bitcoin doing so well is probably attracting some of the more traditional gold bugs out there. Um, but I suppose, I suppose probably more so, it's, you know, we mentioned this period of dollar strength that could be coming up. Um, gold may be moving ahead of some of the other currencies in its weakness against the dollar. Um, oil also looks like maybe a double top pattern taking place in Brent with a, a neckline around 61. So if we get through 60, below 61 in Brent, I think maybe we're in for a, a bigger correction, maybe down to 58 or so. Um, just a, I would say there's, there's a few reasons we had... Um, uh, we did have uh, gasoline, gasoline inventories rising, signs of higher U.S. output, um, even though the rig count did decline in November. Uh, I think it probably rises again in December and January, reflecting the higher prices. So all of that, I think, adds to um, reasons to kind of just take profits after the OPEC meeting. Yeah, OK, great. Thanks, Jasper. And thank you all for watching. If you wish to look at these videos and catch them as they're released, please follow us on social media.